Uh, so my name is Fred Saunderson. Um, I'm the Rights and Information Manager uh, at the National Library of Scotland, um, which is based in Edinburgh and Glasgow uh, in Scotland and in the United Kingdom. So my roles, I look after copyright, but I also look after things like data protection and records management and other information management matters. So thinking about um, the the benefits of, of openness and open in a, in a glam setting, uh, open access and open sharing of cultural heritage. I think for me, the, the main benefits are to do with the simplicity that, that an open approach uh, provides, um, to do with the, the kind of aligning of the, the ethic and logic of openness aligns, um, I think, with the ethic and logic of, of the glam sectors. Um, the opportunities that obviously open, openness creates for, for knowledge creation, new knowledge creation, adaptation, uh, and creativity. So obviously, uh, new new content thrives on on reuse and remixing and regeneration of old content. Um, so, which is significantly increased when you have an open approach to to existing content. And I think finally, uh, a really big one for me is 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 openness allows us to avoid creating an absolute rights nightmare uh, for future generations in glam sectors. So we've only had um, sort of digital and digitized content for a very short period of time, relatively speaking. And we've already got an absolute minefield of, of rights information to do with the, the, the digitized and digital content that we as the sector have created, let alone what we've collected. Um, so we're, we're already creating absolute minefields for, for generations that come after us in terms of what the right situations are. So avoiding that is an absolute benefit of openness. But overall simplicity and, and, and the ability to create new content for me is, is the, 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 the core sort of benefit, if you like, of, of openness. Uh, in terms of barriers that I've perceived and I've, that I've sort of experienced with, with organizations and, and others going open, um, I really think it's derived from uncertainty and from fears maybe of not being able to go back again, you know, seeing it as a one-way road, and I guess a sense of uh, possible loss of control. And I think that last one isn't often an overt thought process. I don't necessarily think a lot of people are thinking, I am concerned that we're going to lose control of our content. I think it's it's a little bit more, it often feels a little bit more, um, you know, internal, and it, it, it's a, a fairly natural reaction to, to kind of that sort of process that really does feel a bit of an irreversible road. You know, once we are open, we are open. Uh, and I think that irreversibility is true. You, you sort of don't go the other direction, but um, as I sort of explained from my benefits, I, I, I don't really think that it's, um, I certainly don't think it's a problem, but yeah, I, th I think the real barriers are, are just the uncertainty about what it might mean and the fact that you won't be able to go back again. Um, I guess if I was going to sort of heart back and think about something that, that someone has said to me, um, about openness that, that really helped open my eyes. I don't have sort of one nice quote from one particular noteworthy person, but what I do remember and what I was thinking of um, when I thought about this is um, the absolute bafflement, the sheer bafflement that I encountered um, sort of earlier in my career here when I was, and, and elsewhere before I started here, when I was sort of speaking to people about some of the restrictions that were in place at that time on, on digital content. Um, that weren't open, and actually trying to explain, justify the the, the closed status of some content, you know, digitized historic content that, that is itself very much open, um, or content that was created by our organization or at our funding, um, that that rightfully you might expect to be open because it's, for example, publicly funded research or, or content like that, and and it's extremely difficult to 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 justify the the, the closed restrictions. And it was it was the bafflement that I was getting back from from a couple of people really early on who who just generally couldn't understand why the open wasn't the course. They weren't using those words. They weren't they were not open proponents. They were interested in using content, but it was seeing it from their eyes that that really enlightened it for me. And finally, I guess a, a personal message to to anyone who's hesitating, um, opening up their collections. Um, 
in my time, I've definitely experienced um, organizations and people having a regret at not opening up sooner or not opening up more. Um, I've never experienced anyone having regret at actually opening up. Um, more and more organizations have been doing it over the years, more and more collections. Uh, I've not experienced, you know, an opening process done correctly. I've never experienced, I've never known of anybody regretting that that has happened or, or seeing that as a negative, um, very much the opposite. So I would really encourage on that basis to, to feel like, go for it. 